We're now going to go inside the mutual office at Monmouth Park and have an interview with the Monmouth Park auditor. His name is Bob, and he's an old friend of mine from way back and he's going to talk about working here at the racetrack, and he's also going to reminisce about working with me many years ago at the Continental Restaurant in West End back in 1973. He's going to talk about the waiters and about Richard Nixon during that Watergate summer. Okay, hi, my name is uh, Bob Scrivani. I uh, came to Monmouth Park in 1971 in June, that summer, applied for a job and uh, worked as an extra and worked my way in in 1973 I became a regular uh, years ago the the job was probably one of the uh, well it, it, it it's second to none in having uh, having a good time and, uh, and and something you'd look forward to every day of course computers and uh, such uh, have, have changed uh, the times have changed and now the job is, uh, well, it's, it's more like, uh, instead of a racetrack, it's more like a factory. Uh, I guess that's the uh, trend of things with technology these days. But I would say, uh, yeah, I would say years ago it was, uh, this was, uh, it still is a fun job, but uh, a lot more fun. Of course, uh, as you become older, uh, putting up with the nuances and the, uh, 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 idiosyncrasies of different people becomes tougher. You become a little more thin-skinned, and uh, and you have to learn how to con you know keep your cool at all times, and try to keep the uh, progress of business uh, uh, going at a at a nice pace. I used to have a good word for that. Uh, I can't think of it now. Uh, do, you, do you care to uh, tell us about some of the? characters that you see at the racetrack and their psychological profile? I would say that uh, a lot of the people at the racetrack come in two categories. They come very rich or they come very, uh, not even middle class, but under middle class. So you have what, what I would call a range from rich to poor. Uh, uh, poor more or less with a dream, uh, the rich more or less looking for action, looking to be seen. Uh, I find uh, I find that there's no barrier between them, though. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a, like a class distinction. One will talk to the to his own kind as easily as he will talk to somebody with less, or, or somebody with less will talk to somebody with more. Okay. Uh, so so it becomes uh, uh, over the years more or less a, a close knit society, and I, and I see this very prevalent in that I see the same people year after year after year. It's almost like a family, and when you see this year after year, you realize that at the track you belong to a, a huge, a great family because you see these same people. Uh, I I don't I very very uh, seldom you see uh, uh, an influx of a new different uh, uh, crowd. It's basically the same people uh, since I started working here in 1971. Of course, with simulcasting and uh, with uh, gambling in Atlantic City, the racetrack and horses aren't as popular. Uh, we don't have the attendance figures we had years ago when, when you could see 30, 35,000 maybe on a daily basis at, uh, at Monmouth Park. Now we're, I guess our average is probably around 10,000, 9,000, something like that. On a good day, you'll get 25,000. Uh, uh, a good Saturday is maybe uh, an 18, 19,000 uh, attendance day. But all in all, uh, racing survives. It's a good job because uh, I don't feel uh, it's not an uh, unsafe occupation. I feel racing's here to stay. Uh, very few, very seldom you hear of a track going under. Most of them, st especially a well-established track like Monmouth or Gulfstream. Highly, of course, uh, that that had to be uh, due to the probably the worst management uh, uh, that uh, could have uh, uh, could have taken charge of that place. That was a disaster. But I feel it was due more to, uh, to politics than it was to uh, anything else. Uh, the, uh, the the change in the dates could have remained the same. Hialeah could have jumped in and grabbed money on the middle dates and uh, resume the end dates uh, on the alternate years, but there was always that uh, fight over the dates, and I, th I, f I feel that had a lot to do with its demise. Uh, as for myself, right now I'm the track auditor here at Monmouth Park, and uh, 
this is a uh, demanding occupation. Uh, uh, a lot of hours are required here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little more uh, interesting because, uh, again, it's, it's like the seller used to be. You have to be able to use your head, whereas today with the computer, with the new machines, there's not as much uh, uh, ingenu your own mind involved as, uh, as, uh, as there was. Um, years ago, you had a, uh, a register that told you, like, uh, let's say you started off at 101. Well, if you sold uh, 12 tickets, it would say 113, and you had to div uh, multiply that by five, which would, uh, you know, which would give you the amount of uh, money you should ask for. Uh, nowadays, you don't have to do that. The computer does it all for you. Okay, earlier in the film, my appearance at the Continental, I think, uh, was probably about 1974, um, 73. Okay, uh, I started work uh, uh, here at Monmouth in 71 in order to supplement my income uh, so that I could uh, afford uh, to pay my bills here on the Jersey Shore. I park cars there at night. And uh, I, I would uh, come here, work here, run over there. It took me about a half an hour and then work there until about 11.30, 12 o'clock. And uh, we, uh, we, we worked the, uh, uh, I think it was Tuesday through Sunday with Mondays off, whereas the track was uh, Monday through Saturday with Sundays off. Okay. Uh, what recent. About the uh, characters at the Continental, they, for, uh, for people that age, I'm talking about the older employees, right. it's unusual to see people at that age clowning as much as they did. Well, they were a, a very hearty, uh, hearty group of people. Uh, I felt the waiters at the Continental for their age were, were supermen compared to what you'd see in everyday life. These people were in their late 60s and 70s, and for them to work four or five hours at a fast pace meant nothing. But uh, one thing I learned from these people was uh, they, they, ate, ate, uh, the, the, they ate properly. Uh, they ate fruit in the morning, basically fruit. If they had coffee, it wasn't a whole hell of a lot of coffee. They ate their big meal in the middle of the afternoon, and they ate a light meal at night. And they never ate before they went to bed. Most of them uh, were not drinkers. The only thing, the only time they would imbibe would maybe be on weekends when they would have a glass of wine uh, before the the last uh, or afternoon or before the afternoon meal. And uh, uh, like I say, they they uh, I noticed that uh, none of them had any problems uh, dental wise. For some reason, they, uh, their teeth were, were perfect. And I found that a lot of their uh, uh, heredity uh, uh, was from, in, from, in, in Italy was from fishing villages, is where they primarily came from. So there was a lot of fish in their diet, a lot of vegetables in their diet, and a lot of uh, uh, food that grew right in that area, surrounding area where they lived or their family lived. And, uh, and, and, and like anything, heredity means a lot as far as your health's concerned, and uh, as far as disease goes or how you would succumb to disease and your resistance and things like that. And like I say, these people were, were just unbelievable. There was one waiter I remember from Miami that was in his late 60s and uh, we were out in the courtyard lifting weights uh, right after the, uh, the last meal. Uh, the, these were the younger fellows that worked there at the restaurant. And this fellow, I can't remember his name, but he came out, and uh, I couldn't believe the guy was uh, in his late 60s. And he actually pressed 150, and I don't mean just threw it up there. I'm talking about press 155 pounds like it was nothing. And he wasn't a big guy. He was maybe about 5'5", five 5'6", foot five, five foot and maybe weighed about 150 pounds himself. So, yeah, I'd say they were, uh, they were incredible people. Yeah, I remember the uh, the Watergate hearings. Uh, what was that, 1973? Yeah. Uh, I find that uh, a lot of I've, yeah, I found a lot of people that did like Nixon were were business people, people uh, with money, and I found out that the uh, working man uh, distrusted him, uh, didn't like him as much. But then again, I find that uh, <clears throat> there's a difference in philosophy a lot of times between the working people and and the and the rich. Uh, uh, any means to an end, uh, pragmatically speaking, if you mi reach your end, it doesn't matter what means you use. But, but I feel Richard Nixon buried himself. I, I, I feel he made himself look bad. He made politicians look bad. 
Uh, I don't hold him in high regard uh, f uh, f for, for the things that happened uh, during his administration. Uh, uh, the fact that he would stoop that low from that high a level uh, upset me to no end. And the fact that uh, the man didn't command the respect or the loyalty of the people surrounding him by his very actions should, uh, should leave a, a lingering picture of Richard Nixon and uh, republicanism of that, of that period, which I believe, uh, in my uh, estimation, is even carried over uh, to today in a lot of respects. Uh, there's been a lot of great presidents uh, that uh, naturally there's things that we remember about them that are popular and things that we remember about them that are unpopular. But I, I, I never remembered Richard Nixon in a good light in any, in any way that I can think of. I remember Jimmy Carter with the uh, Middle East peace talks. I remember him getting blamed for uh, what happened in Iran with that uh, sneak attack, which, which uh, really wasn't involved in it outside of the fact that he gave it the go-ahead. Uh, go Yet at the same time, uh, somebody like Ronald Reagan gets 250-some uh, Marines killed for nothing. And uh, it, uh, it, it's all, it, that's all right. Republicanism with Nazism, I'm in big trouble. So uh, uh, anyway, the, uh, the 73 to Watergate hearings, I remember how interested I was in it. I remember 1973. Here we are in 1990. Uh, just, just seems, uh, it just seems unreal. The years pass so fast, and, uh, and all the things uh, that, uh, that you accomplish, even the one thing that, 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 that I can say over this period of time is even though, you know, you may not hit that mark that you aim for, even though uh, you may be a little short of it or under it, it's still pretty good. And having your health is uh, probably one of the best things about the whole, uh, the whole endeavor, keeping your health. Can I show you a desk here? Do you want to comment on that? Uh, you have a pretty well, tidy desk compared to a lot of people. I actually, know. actually, I'm probably more or less, uh, if you would compare uh, the odd couple, I'm probably the sloppy one. When you look at my desk, you probably it's it's sloppy. If you would take a look at the other desks around here, I'm more uh, I'm not I'm more uh, carefree. I'm not as more uh, orientated as they are. This is the, the, these are pools of uh, of the day on track at the Meadowlands and and combined. And I keep track of all the figures, the wind play show, the exact, the trifecta. This is uh, what I do during the day. I take the telephone pole calls and. And I compare the, the pools from, from this year as opposed to last year. And uh, within the thousands of dollars, I determine whether we're over or short of the mark uh, 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 monetarily. Uh, down here, you have your, uh, your handle added to your previous handle. It gives you your total with your average for the day and also your attendance. Uh, over here, we have the summary with the commissions, the surplus. And here at the end of the day, I take the uh, win play show, exacta, and trifecta, break them down into percentages, which go to the state, the association of persons, trust, and breeders, who, who are given the checks and these amounts here on the end. And of course, total deposits for the day. Uh, this is the treasury statement, and this is uh, the sales commission surplus, plus your pools and your percentages. And. Uh, Say your name and finish up now. We've okay, this is Bob Scrivani saying goodbye. And uh, when uh, Greg here puts together the 1973 uh, film and this film, you'll get to see uh, uh, how little I've aged through the years, really. <laughs> Are you still a Chicago Cubs fan? Uh, White Sox. White Sox it was? White Sox, right. Oh, they're doing good. They're doing great. Every time they beat the Yankees, it makes my heart feel good. And they're getting a new ballpark, but they're building it in the south side. Well, uh, south side, north side, west side, it doesn't matter. Chicago's all the same now. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye-bye.